Exciting Detective Theater presents City of Grey from the files of Dexter Dearborn, Private Eye. It had been a quiet week at the Dexter Dearborn Detective Agency. So I used the time to square away some old files that were cluttering up the office. I was just finishing up when the phone rang. Dexter Dearborn. It was a woman by the name of Aurora Delridge. She asked me to come to her family's estate on Lake Washington right away. She sounded attractive and rich, and since I wasn't busy... Thanks for coming out on short notice, Mr. Dearborn. It's no trouble, Miss Delridge. Actually, it's Mrs. Delridge. My husband and I are separated. You were recommended to me by Colonel Comstock. He tells me I can rely on your discretion. He thinks very highly of you. I was able to do a couple things for him a long time ago. How do you know the Colonel? Through my father, Maynard Greenwood. He and Daddy worked on the Dash 80 project in the 50s. You familiar with it? Sure. Dash 80 was the prototype for the Boeing 707, revolutionized the industry. You're very well informed, Mr. Dearborn. It's my business to be well informed, Mrs. Delridge. Yeah, Daddy put everything he had into Boeing stock. Smart man, your father. But I suspect you didn't invite me over here today to discuss your family's fortune. Quite so, Mr. Dearborn. It's about my younger sister, Lenora. She's gone missing. Really? When was the last time you were in touch with her? Three weeks ago. We vacation in Sonora, Mexico after the holidays. We have a house down there. I spoke with her two days before I left Seattle on January 5th. And she was to meet me there two days later, but she never arrived. After not hearing from her for two weeks, I got worried and came back to Seattle. That was yesterday. Do you have any reason to suspect foul play? Not really, except Lenora loves our trips to Mexico. She never misses them. What else can you tell me about your sister, Mrs. Doerge? She's 25, beautiful, artistic. She has a small income from her trust fund, so she's taking her time with college. She's almost finished, but she's not enrolled this quarter. She has a part-time job at a bookstore at the foot of Queen Anne. My father pays the rent on her Capitol Hill apartment. Mr. Dearborn, um, generally my sister has a good head on her shoulders, but more than once she's gotten involved with some rough characters. Two years ago, one of them tried to blackmail my father, and Daddy just paid him off to make it go away and avoid publicity. What, did he have some dirty pictures of your sister? <laughs> Something like that. And you haven't heard from your sister at all since before your trip to Mexico. That's right. When I call her phone, it goes straight to voicemail. Here are keys to her apartment. I'd knock first, if you need anything else. This ought to be enough to get me started. Thank you, Mrs. Delridge. First, I made my way over to Lenora Greenwood's Capitol Hill apartment, just to give it a quick once-over. Her mailbox was stuffed with three weeks' worth of mail, and there was no sign that her apartment had been lived in for at least that long. The manager said she hadn't seen her since before New Year's. I wasn't that thorough because I wanted to make it to that bookstore on Queen Anne before they closed and see if I could talk to Lenora's employer. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Dexter Dearborn. Ah, good afternoon, Mr. Dearborn. I'm uh, Edgar Finney. Is there something I can help you locate? Uh, someone, actually. Uh, Lenora Greenwood, I understand she works for you. Uh, yes, but she's on vacation. Mr. Finney, I'm a private investigator. Lenora's family has asked me to locate her. She was to meet her sister in Mexico, but she never showed up. When was the last time you saw her, and uh, did you notice anything unusual or out of the ordinary about her? Yes. As a matter of fact. What day was it? Uh, last day of December. New Year's Eve. Yeah, um, just just before two in the afternoon, she she came in a bit flustered and, uh, and apologized that she wouldn't be able to work her shift that day because plans had changed and she was going to need to start her vacation right then. Well, I told her that would be fine. And Lenora is a very hard worker and the customers love her. What happened then? Well, then she just faked me profusely, walked out, and got on the back of a large, very loud motorcycle. And the gentleman driving it was tall, and he had on black leather riding gear. Really? Interesting. Ever seen him before? No, oh, no, I would have remembered. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Finney. I won't take up any more of your time. I would cover Lenora's shifts, if I were you, uh, for the time being. Uh, I'll try to keep you updated. Very well, then. Thanks. Good, one. Good luck. Guy on a big, loud Harley. 
Teabag. Who the hell calls themselves Teabag? So now apparently I'm looking for a guy on a big loud motorcycle, possibly who goes by the name of Teabag. Well, I headed over to Johnny C's cycle shop to see if maybe he might be able to help me out. Now that is a beautiful piece of machinery. Dex, it's just for sale. Make you a sweet deal. You want to take it for a ride? Maybe later, Johnny. Right now, I got to ask you about a guy on a bike. Uh, give me a few minutes. I have a couple things to finish up. Uh, I also have a guy coming in a second for the Ducati over there. Uh, half up around the corner at the Comet. Sure, sounds good. So if Laura Greenwood was indeed running around with this teabag character, I guess my next move was to uh, head to Georgetown. But there was no way I was going to do that tonight. I had a couple lucky breaks, but in this business, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Georgetown would have to wait till tomorrow. All I really wanted was to have a couple more drinks and mull things over. 